So in, in this video I'm going to go through the features of a Slayer spreadsheet that I've put together. Basically I'm going to tell you all about what it does and a quick summary of how it does it. Um, I'd had a couple of Slayer spreadsheets in the past that kind of worked. Uh, they were fairly basic, they didn't include a lot of features and I decided to go about making a new one. Uh, the two ideas that I wanted to put into it where I wanted it to, to display as much information as possible in a readable fashion and I wanted it to be easily adjustable. I wanted it to account for as many changes as, as it could really. Um, yeah, so first thing you want to go and do is go and make a copy of it, but I'm not going to do that for now. Uh, you enter your name so you can change your name and it changes the values accordingly. Or you, and then you can change your slay goal to say I only wanted to get to 80 mil in XP. I think that's 80 mil, that's 8 mil. It would then change the values accordingly as well. Uh, then you go and change anything you want in these two sheets that has a drop down. If you have any questions, PM me in game or message me on Twitter. A comment on this video would probably actually be preferable because I hate the 140 character limit, you can't actually say anything. Um, try not to fiddle with anything too much in these sorts of sheets and it can break things quite easily and um, it's mostly only relevant in terms of the XP rates if you live on 99. I'll probably explain that a bit better later. So you get displayed your XP per hour, your melee XP per hour, the time it will take you to reach your slayer goal, the time it will take you to reach your slayer goal and 200 mil melee is in ranged, the GP per XP it will take you to reach your slayer goal or while accomplishing your slayer goal, the total cost of slaying, so with Jiradel for instance I'd profit 3.6 mil and with Neve I would lose uh, 670 mil and then the total cost including getting the 200 mils in melee and ranged. So, this is the sheet where all of the action will probably be happening. It, it displays all of the information relevant to the tasks you'll be doing, and it displays the overall figures, supplies used, uh, drops your gain, and in this area you can configure most all things that will change anything on the spreadsheet. So this is a dynamically updated list that will change depending on which tasks you have unlocked, which gear you're choosing, combat style you're using, etc. to change all of these values here. Uh, this table covers all of the overall figures, which are fairly self-explaining. So you've got hours taken, tasks completed, your melee to slayer ratio, how many points you'll gain per task completed on average, um, how much magic XP and ranged XP you'll get while doing it, and your end hours. This one displays the supplies you will need in order to accomplish your goal. And this one is your bone crusher statistics. Down here is some miscellaneous configuration. So this is how many points you will allow your combat stats to drop before you repot. So if I were to change that to 8, we'd adjust how many super combats you used and your GP per XP. Uh, Desert Elite Complete uh, changes how many inventory slots a Slayer can taken up, which can adjust this value. Uh, slayer Cape, which adjusts whether or not you'll be using the Slayer Cape perk, which gives you a 10% chance to get your previous task upon reassignment. If I turn that off, it changes the points per task quite significantly. Uh, Nightmare Zone for Melees. Totals between Abyssal Demons and 150k now in Nightmare Zone. So it changes between that and that, and that and that. Now uh, Bone Crusher just turns Bone Crusher on and off. Fairly self explanatory. Uh, this area here allows you to change whether or not you do a task. Whether you skip a task, whether you block a task, or whether you do not have a task unlocked, for example, 
ones that you spend points to unlock, such as bosses or I don't know, perhaps you're like me and you haven't done the quest associated with scabarites, scarabites. So you can change that to not unlocked and it will adjust your points per task. Now the extension controls whether or not you have a task extended. So for example, I would be killing 144,000 dark beasts at 46k an hour with dark beasts extended. If I were to turn that off, I would only be killing 20,000 dark beasts with a total XP per hour of 47,000. Uh, this only changes the numbers for tasks that do have an extension, so it's all accounted for. Uh, the combat style changes uh, obviously how you're going to kill them, so if I wanted to mage abyssal demons it would adjust the XP rate. Uh, it, would, it would change the melee XP gained, it would change the magic XP gained, and it would adjust the supplies accordingly. Same as the gear setup, if I swap that to Aram's. It should reduce. It should increase the amount of prayer potions. That they should reduce the amount of prayer potions are used because of something that I'll again explain a bit later uh, in another sheet. Uh, the combat potion changes obviously which combat potion you're going to use. So if I were to change this to superset, it would remove some super combat, add in some superset. If I change it to auto, it goes through and looks at how many other items I have in my inventory, such as teleport, slayer cape, uh, bone crusher, cannon base, cannon balls, SGS, and all that sort of stuff, and then it adds in how many prayer potions I have depending on the prayer drain, which is decided by gear choosing, and then it figures out how many spots I have left and decides which one to use. So, as you can see here, auto pick superset for abyssal demons because of how many prayer pots you need in the inventory. Uh, overhead is whether or not you're praying overhead on the task, and then magic imbue is whether or not you'll be imbuing on the task, which adjusts the GP and the magic XP. And then if you scroll down a bit, there is the adjustable drop section, so you can decide whether or not you want to pick up a drop. Uh, it displays how much GP you get per drop, whether or not it's stackable, so you can use that to decide whether or not you want to pick it up, I suppose. For example, room bolts might be more appealing to pick up because they're stackable, even though they're the lowest, second lowest value you drop there. Uh, this is how many of the drop you should receive, and then how many of the item you should receive. So for an item like room bolts, you'll get 1400 of the drop, 20,000 of the item itself, and then the GP you gain from it. If you turn off, like say, I really hate dark bows, I turn that off. I should no longer gain any XP, any GP from Dark Bows, and it will suitably adjust my GP per XP values. As you can see, that has dropped into the negative rather than the positive. So this is probably the sheet that you'll be looking at the most. Um, really, it's the only sheet you should need to look at because these ones are sort of a calculation sheet. So go through them quickly now. So Jiradel task covers all of the task data, so you've got your weight, block weight, skip rate, assignment rate, completion rate, uh, adjusted assignment, which is taking into account the slayer cape, and the point gain per task, and adjusted point gain per task, which is no cape, yes cape. Now uh, you've got your slayer XP per hour, which is controlled by which combat style you decide to do, same as your melee XP per hour. Uh, that also takes into account, say, you decided to range it. Uh, you've got your average task size and your max task amount, which is which are both adjusted depending on whether or not you're extending the task. Uh, over here we have the percentage of the time you're spending at them and the hours you're spending at them. The total amount that you'll kill, the total amount of XP you'll get, and the total percentage of XP you'll get from that monster. Uh, we have the magic XP per hour, which is determined by which combat style you're using, or whether or not you decide to imbue. So if I were to go over here and decide to mage abyssal demons and imbue while at dark beasts, uh, it would adjust those two values accordingly, automatically. 
can do that. And then you come back here, that also changes the magic XP from and the true magic XP from, which is the end cumulative magic XP. Uh, the same for ranged XP per hour and how much ranged XP you get overall, which changes, for example, with Dust Devils. If you change it to magic, it changes the ranged XP per hour to zero because you don't get any ranged in the catacombs. And then time to get to task is how long it takes on average around about. Uh, to bank and to get to the task, which is then used to create a true task time, which means that banking, getting a new task and running to a task is taken into account for the final XP per hour, so no adjustments need to be made there. And then over here is just the section that handles the bone crusher experience. And if I go to Jiradal supplies here, this handles uh, the supplies you use per each task, so we have the offensive drain, so how much you will be losing from piety or your 15% prayer, whether that be the ranged one or the mage one. And your overhead drain, which is what you lose if you're using an overhead. Uh, these two are effectively just changed depending on which gear setup you use, so I will for this change that to mage and change that to arrows. Then as we can see, the offensive drain and overhead drain adjust, so that will only be taking into account the 15% prayer used and the prayer bonus from Arams. And same for that, our overhead drain is only taken into account if you have overhead selected in the Gerardale sheet down here, which you shouldn't for epistles because of blood barrage. Uh, potion take is how many offensive potions, whether it be super combat or super sets, you should be taking to the task, and potion use is how many you actually use. Uh, that one's for inventory potions. That one's used for calculating inventory slots, rather, and this one is used for calculating GP. Uh, whether or not you'll be cannoning, whether it's in multi, whether you're taking a teleport, whether you're taking a stem and a dose, these can all be adjusted uh, to yes or no. And then this column decides how many inventory slots will be taken up by these items, which then later on allows you to determine how many empty inventory slots you'll have and which potion type you will be using. Nice and small. And then this one does uh, how many prayer drain you'll be losing per second and how much prayer you'll be using per task, the amount of doses you should use per task, and the amount of prayer potions you should use per task. Uh, cannonballs per rotation is done on whether or not you're taking a cannon and whether or not it is uh, multi-combat. The calculator assumes that if it is a multi-combat task, so so for example, calfights is a multi-combat task. It uses of the it uses six cannons per rotation, and there are eight stages in a rotation. And on a single combat task, it will use three cannonballs per rotation rather than six. Um, this is a fairly ugly assumption, but it was the best way I could think of to get it to work neatly. I might change this to 2.5 sometime. And then we have this, which is how many cannonballs will be used per task. Pretty self-evident. Uh, the imbue casts, which does the runes. Uh, the barrage tar casts, which does the runes. And how many darts you should be firing per task, which is relevant if you decide to set a task to ranged. And then if we go to Jiradel costs, this is the one that calculates the costs of the supplies. So super combat cost, super set cost, uh, prayer potion cost, cannonballs and cost. Uh, the total amount of those resources that will be used and the amount that those will cost. And then we have, uh, I'll turn on a viewing again for dark beasts. And as you can see, that adds in astrals, fires, and waters, and then we have the barraging runes for these tasks. So runes for that one, no runes for this. Uh, the darts. So if I were to go to Ludvald, change that to ranged with arrows. That would include the appropriate amount of adamant darts used per task and factor those into the total adamant darts used in total adamant cost and it does the same thing for all the runes and calculates the total GP per hour spent while doing that task. 
Uh, we'll just undo those changes I made quickly. And then finally there is the Juradel drop sheet which calculates which using the drop rate and the amount of the monster that you're killing calculates how many of each drop you receive in the GP received per item. Uh, this is of course all controlled by this field down here, so if again I were to turn off Dark Bows, we go back to Jiradel Drops, and the amount of Dark Bows that you are receiving changes to zero, and the amount of GP received from them also changes to zero. And yeah, it's it's about all there is. Uh, all of the same functionality exists for Neve. Uh, the two sheets are basically identical. The only real difference is the the, the task weighting and the tasks that are assigned. So, so she assigns brine rates and Jurado does not assign brine rates. And they both have separate weights for each task and all of those things are taken into account when calculating the values for these. So yeah, that's my slice spreadsheet. I uh, hope you get as much use out of it as I have. Um, I enjoyed working on it. It was, it was something interesting, it presented a couple of challenges that I didn't really expect, and yeah, that's about it.